Hey guys, today I'm testing out some fruit and vegetable gadgets from Amazon to see if they work or not, and if they're worth your money. All right, what this is, is a strawberry slicer. We'll cut the tip off of the strawberry, and then you're supposed to put the strawberry in like this. Oh, beautiful slices. I was not expecting it to shoot out that far. That's what she said. <laughs> But this is really cool. You get really, really even cuts like this. This time I'm gonna leave a stem on to see if it cuts through. Ta-da! Actually, I like it with the stem on even better because it looks really cute. When I got this, I also wondered if it would double as an egg slicer because of these evenly spaced razor blades. Here we have a hard boiled egg. I've been making a lot of egg salad sandwiches, so this would be such a lifesaver if it actually works. Let's see. All right, I'm gonna put it in here. It'll be strawberry flavored eggs. Oh, it looks like my egg is too big. Ugh. I mean, if you're not looking for a perfect egg and if you're just making an egg sandwich, I mean, it doesn't really matter if it's perfect. It works, not for a really big egg, but maybe you just need to cut it in half. Overall though, it's not bad. I'd still use this for my egg salad sandwich. I feel like I'll be able to use this for sliced bananas, peaches, any other fruits. I'll give this a nine out of 10. Okay, so the next one we have is a cauliflower floor separator. I don't know what the difference between this is and a knife. I feel like a knife could do just as fine of a job, but we're gonna put it to the test. It's called a stock chop, and what you're supposed to do is just press down to chop and remove the florets. You have to remove all the leaves first. Here's a spider. Organic. So you're supposed to just take this and just press it down in the middle. Mm. But what's the difference between this and a knife? Couldn't I just do that with a knife? I mean, I like that I don't, I like that it's pretty dull and I'm not at risk of cutting myself it's not super sharp. This is actually pretty cool. I was really skeptical of this. I give it a seven out of 10. Whoa. Our next one will be a mango slicer. I'm actually really skeptical of this one, mainly because I always wonder if this hole right here is big enough for the pit or if it's too big, but we'll find out. I already mastered cutting a mango. If you guys wanna see how I cut all my other fruits by hand, be sure to check out my fruit hack video. I'll link in the description box below. Let's cut the bottom so we have a nice firm base to work on. And then what you're just supposed to do is press it down straight through. But then like, how do you know where the pit is? I mean, obviously the middle, but this is just like a big guessing game. Oh my God, that actually really worked. <laughs> I mean, I wonder, Wow, so a mango pit is actually not as big as I thought it was. Hmm. All right, so now you have a mango like this, and another trick that I've learned how to peel a mango is simply to put it against a glass. Actually, this depends how ripe it is too. Put it against a glass. Now, I only have like this glass, and it has a pretty thick lip, so if you have like a thinner glass, it would probably work better, but then you just like Scrape it down. This is not working for me, but you get the point. Good mango. I would just peel it by hand as I showed you guys how to do it in that video. For actually impressing me, I'll give it a seven out of 10. The next one I'm gonna try is this garlic zoom. This brand, Chefin, is really popular on Amazon, it seems. But I first found out about this tool through my friend Frances, who used it on one of her videos. I think it was like the salmon porridge one. And I really wanted to try it myself. Okay, so the direction says you have to fill it up with three peeled garlic cloves. I wish the tool actually allows you to add an unpeeled garlic and then have it like peel it while it chops. That would be cool. Okay, so these are rather large, so I'm just gonna do two cloves of garlic. I mean, at this point, I feel like I could just grab my knife and just chop it and save myself from washing another thing. But all you have to do is place the garlic clove in this little container. I hope my garlic's not too big. And then just glide it as it chops. I think my garlic's too big. Okay, here you go. 
it's moving. I mean, I would have been done chopping by now. <laughs> okay. There's some stuck at the bottom here. I think it's an interesting tool. Your fingers still do smell like garlic. Uh, if you're new to cooking and you don't like chopping, this could be helpful, but I think it's easier just to chop it yourself. Like it's not that hard to chop a garlic with your knife. I mean, you already have to peel it anyways. I could have just chopped it like this. I give this a, a three, maybe a two. Two and a half. I give this a two and a half because I don't think you need it. Sorry, Francis. The next one we're gonna try is a cherry pitter. It's cherry season or the tail end of it anyways. And if you guys were like me, you spent most of your life trying to cut the cherry with the knife and then either using your finger or scraping it out with the tip of your knife and it took forever. That's a lot of work. So I found this tool that's a cherry pitter. You're supposed to de-stem and then open this up and then the cherry goes in the middle right here and then it has this prong that's supposed to shoot the pit through. Huh, it's not what I was expecting, but it did separate the pit from the cherry and the cherry is still whole. <gasps> Clean cut. This cherry pitter gets 10 out of 10. If you guys bake a lot with cherries, this one is a must have. All right, the next one we have is this grape slicer. I have high hopes for this after the cherries. Only thing is it feels and looks a lot more flimsy and I'm not quite sure how to open it. Okay, you're supposed to press this really difficult to press button. Oh, there you go. All right, you're just supposed to pull it out, I guess. I don't even know. The thing that I'm not super impressed with is that the teeth is plastic. I thought that it should be metal like the mango cutter to make clean cuts, but this would be useful if you have a toddler because grapes are one of those choking things, but let's see. <gasps> wow. I mean, they're not the prettiest slices, but they work. Okay, the second one worked a lot faster, so you have to put some pressure into it. Okay! Because it looks a little cheap and kind of janky and it wasn't super easy to open, I give this an eight out of 10. Next up, we have this five-in-one avocado slicer, masher, cutter, everythinger. Let's see if it does the job. So my avocado is, I probably could have used another day, but we're gonna work with it anyways. So this is the slicer, it's plastic. This side is serrated. I'm gonna try to use the serrated so far. So good, it does a pretty good job. I mean, not super straight, but it's okay. There's this pit remover. It's just like four metal prongs that's supposed to, ooh. Have you guys seen that meme 2020? It's like this giant pit inside of an avocado where you don't get any avocado meat at all. That's how I feel about this. Like it is not gonna be removing any pit here. <laughs> I, Yeah, I just don't know how it would remove it. There's like this little tip right here. All right, so the pitter, I was really excited for the pitter because that's the one part that I have trouble getting out most of the time, but this doesn't work clearly. That's okay, we'll see if it slices though. I've always wondered. I mean, <laughs> I can do a better job with a knife. Okay, let's see if the masher works. The container, it's meant to hold any avocados, so we'll just mash it directly in here. The masher wasn't super impressive either. I feel like with a knife, a spoon, and a fork, that's all you really need to either slice the avocado or mash it, and then a spoon to scoop it out. I give this a two out of 10. Next up, we are gonna test out my favorite summer vegetable, corn with a corn stripper. This is kind of a new tool on the market. I have never seen a corn stripper before. I've always done this by hand with a knife. Like I would just cut it and then like put it on a bowl on top of a plate and then just like slice it down. And it wasn't that, it wasn't that easy. So, okay, so you're supposed to take this and then just strip it down. Ta-da! 
So I have to be careful not to get too, too close to the cob, otherwise it gets stuck and it's really hard to run it straight through. I think if I held it down like this, I have a better grip, definitely. But literally, I could just strip corn all day long because this is so satisfying. So that was really fun for me and it's super therapeutic. So let's see how many seconds it takes to strip an ear of corn. Go. Would you get this corn stripper too? It did get stuck sometimes and I was worried about cutting myself. So I will give it a nine out of 10, but I love it. So the next one we have is a carrot noodler, although I'm sure you can use it for other things too. I'm not sure what the difference is between this one and this spiralizer. You're supposed to twist it and make it into long noodle strands, but we'll see. So you're supposed to just run it through, kind of like the corn stripper, and it has these serrated teeth that help separate the carrot. <gasps> oh! It totally works. This is almost easier. You don't get like the pretty spirals as you would with that one, but mine kept breaking and I didn't get long strands. I got like one long strand. But this one is definitely a lot more consistent. So what's cool about this is that you can make the strands as long as you want or as short as you want. So I give this a nine out of 10. So in my last fruit hack video, you guys told me about the pineapple core and how that was so much easier for you. And so I'm gonna test it out to see if it really is a lot easier. It came in three pieces, this one detaches. I do like that this is metal and it has like this serrated circle core, a plastic slicer. Not sure about this one. So I'm gonna cut off the top. This one is on the sad side. A lot of the pineapples at the store were not ready yet, so I had to get what I could find. The circumference of this core actually just meets right outside of the pineapple eye. So I'm supposed to press this down and then just twist it. Whoa, so much juice coming out. So how do you know when it goes to the end? Like, is it supposed to, oh, okay. That's how you know, it cuts through and everything starts to fall out. Okay, so now I guess you just pull it out. Ooh, and then you're left with a hollow pineapple with the core. You know what would be so cool is if we took a pina colada or some kind of tropical delicious drink, filled it in and just drink out of a pineapple. I was gonna say pina colada, but just make sure you don't cut through all the way so that the juices all fall out. That's what, for this, that was a rookie mistake. But okay, this looks pretty cool. It's like a canned fruit thing. I only have one pineapple eye that got stuck here. That's okay. Oh, and the top. So, all right. Let's see if this slicer does the trick or maybe let's see if it just like cuts through. Okay, so it definitely cuts through one single slice or two. Let's see if it'll cut through the whole entire thing. Eh. This is actually pretty cool. You guys, you guys, had a great recommendation. The only thing I would change is if this was a metal cutter, it would have just slid through this. If they went through all the trouble of making this metal, why is this plastic? This should have been metal as well. I give this an eight out of 10. And finally, I saved the best for last. This is a pretty heavy duty size watermelon. Well, it's actually medium size, but it's super heavy. So today I thought I would try this tool that I found on Amazon. It looks pretty gnarly and it's almost like too good to be true. You're supposed to just cut through the watermelon and this propeller thing is supposed to cut it into cubes. What do you guys think? Let me know if it will actually work in the comment section below. So I'm gonna cut my watermelon in quarters. 
It's a good looking melon. So since this is not a full size watermelon, I'm just gonna cut a little bit on the side here to give it a full runway. So there's even like a measurement thing right here. So I get like two centimeters cubes. What? Okay, that one needs help. What? What? This is so cool. Okay, the only thing is, as I was pushing it, I must not have kept my hand steady because it went from deep, like two centimeters, to probably just like one. So I'm gonna try to keep my hand really steady and see if it could stay two centimeters thick the whole way through. <gasps> this is so cool! Oh my goodness! This is so amazing. Only thing is, once you get to the end, it's kind of hard. There's like a little tiny small piece left here. That's why you probably need like a really big watermelon. These mini ones work, but they're probably not gonna cut it. You don't get perfectly sized watermelons. They're more like, I don't know what shape this is. As like a party trick, this is pretty awesome. Like if you were at a party and you were to show this gadget in use, I think people would be pretty impressed. I don't know, I'm impressed. What do you guys think? I give this a 10 out of 10. If you guys are interested in purchasing any of these gadgets for yourself, I have linked to them in the description box below. This video is not sponsored. I've always wondered what these crazy gadgets were like, so I thought I'd test them out so you don't have to. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more fun food hacks. I'll see you guys next time. Bye!